Okay, we're here on the final day of NAM 2011 with Dr. Lucy Green from the Mullard Space Science Laboratory. Hi, Lucy. Hi, it's great Hi. to be here. Um, could you tell us about your current research? Um, I know you're very involved in a lot of solar um, research with coronal mass uh, ejections, in particular being one of your key specialities. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what you're doing at the moment? Yep, absolutely. Well done for saying coronal mass ejections correctly as well. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. So my job is to use images coming from spacecraft that view the sun's atmosphere. Um, and actually the sun's atmosphere shines very brightly in ultraviolet light and x-rays so we have to we have to put instruments in space to see the sun in, in this way and my job is all about actually looking at how we can understand immense magnetic fields in the sun's atmosphere um, and we use these studies to understand these coronal mass ejections which are eruptions of magnetic field from the sun's atmosphere okay and how do you feel that cycle 23 cycle 24 is now happening cycle 23 obviously was a quite a prolonged minima um, do you think that cycle 24 is going to give us a lot of activity that's a really good question and it's something that is hotly debated in the solar physics community so we we have obviously observations of cycle 23 we came out of cycle 23 in very recently into a time of solar minimum and it was very prolonged so we had very few sunspots the sun was very quiet there weren't very many corona mass ejections and actually the sun has been at its quietest for, for 100 years and it kind of it did take us by surprise so what we're doing now is thinking about what's going to happen in solar cycle 24 and the current models predict actually quite a quiet cycle so smaller than cycle 23 so that means fewer sunspots and, and probably fewer um, corona mass ejections as well. Will that then therefore affect your own research in terms of the amount of data that you're going to be able to get back? It will do, but I think it, it just adds in more information to the interesting science of the sun. So it's hard enough, I think, trying to understand things that we can predict, um, or, you know, th things that we expect rather. But then when the sun does something we don't expect, it just makes it even more interesting to us. And that leads on quite nicely to you're involved with a new mission um, collaborating with JAXA called LIMA. Um, could you talk about that? LIMA is a fantastic opportunity for us. So the UK and in fact Europe as a whole has a very long um, heritage of working with the Japanese Space Agency. We've, we've flown instruments on on their missions previously. LIMA would be a European contribution to Japan's next solar mission, which is due to fly in about 2019. So LIMA would be um, a telescope on the next solar Japanese mission, which would study the sun's atmosphere, these hot gases in immense detail, looking at all layers of the sun's atmosphere and how this dyna dynamic atmosphere is evolving and changing with time. And I believe there's two solar missions being planned by the Japanese. Um, could you talk about the differences between the two missions and which one, obviously, you're, you're gunning for? That's right. So in Japan, obviously, it's their mission. So they're trying to work out what scientific questions they want to answer. So there's two um, things on the table at the moment. First is what they're calling Plan A. And that would be a mission using a spacecraft that comes out of the plane of the ecliptic. So flies up towards the top and bottom of the sun to see the poles of the sun. And this mission is really about understanding the magnetic cycle of the sun which ultimately drives these corona mass ejections and sunspots and all these other things. But we, we still have lots of fundamental questions about the magnetic cycle of the sun. So how is the magnetic field created and how does it evolve with time? So that's, that's the aims of the first idea. The second idea, plan B, is this what we're calling a high resolution observatory to it will also study the sun's magnetic field but it will study the magnetic field with a view to understanding things like corona mass ejections solar flares and energy transfer actually throughout the sun's atmosphere okay so that's obviously and that's planned for around about 2019 as a launch the right. launch will be 2019 yeah. so if you're watching this uh, please try and support the uh, plan b uh, proposal for jaxa um, if you're a scientist obviously try and get involved there's been a call for scientists to actually propose science missions um, to contribute towards this um, and thank you very much for your time.